Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so in the middle of this Gen Chem boot camp, or just along the way, I need to review this topic that I'm sure you've seen before. I'm sure this acronym looks very familiar from you, maybe your Gen Chem days. But while you, I'm sure you've covered Vesper theory before, we just need a little bit of a sliver of review, and we really only need to know three things about Vesper theory to kind of get us all the way through, believe it or not, all of OCHEM 1 and OCHEM 2. So let's, you can even just kick back, relax, and we're just going to go over something I'm sure you've already seen before. Okay, so let's tease this acronym apart, right? This stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. Okay, sounds big and scary, but really all it stands for is valence shell electrons, right? Valence shell electron pairs repel each other. So when we draw Lewis structures, right, you know, we draw them like on 2D, you know, pieces of paper or even this whiteboard. But in actuality, these bonds that consist of two electrons, uh, single bonds, they're going to basically orient themselves so that, because like charges repel like charges, so, you know, all the bonds on, uh, around an atom, they're not going to be all next to each other. They're going to spread out to minimize the repulsion because electrons don't like to be next to other electrons. So, again, a lot of talking. Let's just go over what we need to review for our organic purposes, okay? So, we've already done Lewis dot structures, and I'm just going to throw up a couple of structures, and I'm just going to assume you're going to be okay with having, being able to draw them from a Lewis dot perspective. Okay. So I'm going to draw carbon dioxide right here. We're going to go over the one of the three geometric shapes we need to know. So if we look at CO2, right, about this carbon, right, we have two double bonds on both sides. Now this structure is called a linear structure. So basically, you know, there's two bonding areas around this carbon. So these, uh, you know, four electrons on, these, on this side, this four electrons on this side, about this carbon, they're going to try and maximize their distance between each other, right? That's why, because uh, they're going to be repelling each other, right? And they're valence shell electron pairs. So the maximum distance they can achieve at this point, right, if there's two of them, the farthest they can get apart from each other is 180 degrees. And that's why we see this linear structure, okay? I'm sure that looks familiar. Okay, so now let's look at the next of the three that we need to know. So. If I gave you guys, so this is CO2, if I then drew BH3, I'm sure you remember boron's one of those weird ones that likes to have three bonds. It's one of those uh, octet exceptions, right? Same thing with aluminum. However, looking at this, if there's three things oriented about this boron, what is the maximum distance, you know, these, they can all orient themselves uh, apart you know, based on the repulsion, right? They want to maximize their distance between each other. Well, since there's three things, right? Think about cutting a circle into three equal thirds. These bond angles are 120 degrees, right? So this uh, shape is called trigonal planar, okay? So up here we have linear, the bond angles are 180 degrees. Here, this shape is called trigonal planar, and the bond angles are 120 degrees. This shape will become very prevalent moving forward. So if you have an atom that's attached to three things, it's going to be trigonal planar, and the bond angles there are going to be 120 degrees. So think about this, right? It's a triangle, and this word planar means everything literally exists in the plane of whatever you're drawing on. So if it's a whiteboard or a piece of paper, everyone's level on the same uh, plane, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we get to our boy carbon. So if I drew for you CH4, you know, I could draw it like this, but this is not how it looks like in real life. These bond angles are not 90 degrees. Believe it or not, we have a hard time kind of representing this on a flat uh, plane, a piece of paper or a whiteboard, because we don't have to just go down for 90 degrees this carbon can actually orient itself or its bonds about itself a little bit further than 90 degrees. So what I'm sure you've seen before is two bonds in the plane of the page, then a wedge, which represents this hydrogen coming out of the plane of the whiteboard, and then a dash, which is actually this hydrogen going 
through the plane of the whiteboard. So if you want to think about it, if this is coming out of the board and this is coming into the board, they're actually on opposite sides. So this is a tetrahedral shape, and these bond angles are 109.5 degrees. So I'm sure you've seen these before. A quick rehash. So I'm actually going to erase this. This was kind of more of a Gen Chem gear review, and then I'm going to kind of relate this and pull this back to how it relates more to organic chemistry. But definitely remember linear, 180 degree bond angles, trigonal planar, everything's on the same plane, 120 degrees apart, and tetrahedral is 109.5 where we have a dash and a wedge, wedge coming out towards you, dash going away from you through whatever surface you're actually drawing on. So let me erase this and then I'll kind of connect the dots. Okay gang, so let's kind of wrap that little Vesper review and then kind of apply it to what we've been working with. So I drew two little structures in bond line, right? And we see there's a double bond and a triple bond and then a little bit of a regular alkane. So let's kind of pick this apart and see if we can pick out where there are certain types of Vesper geometry we recognize. Okay, so let's look at this structure right here. This is actually ethene, right? Because it's two carbons, so there's the F part and then there's a double bond, so there's the ENE -E part, ethene. Okay, so you see about both carbons, right? One, two, three bonding areas, one, two, three bonding areas. The maximum way these bonds can orient themselves to minimize repulsion. I don't know if you guys are catching on, but that would be both uh, about both of these carbons, right? That would be trigonal planar geometry, right? Three bonding areas. So we would see 120 degrees there, 120 degrees there, 120 degrees there, as well as here, here, and there. So you can see that's where this is going to kind of manifest itself in, or in the organic chemistry we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's look at this structure over here, right? So you have a triple bond and then a little bit of this going on. So with this triple bond, right, we see about this carbon, about this carbon, right, if we're trying to just figure out these carbons' geometries, right, we see there's one, two spaces around it. So we can see this is clearly an 180 degree bond angle. And the reason why I had to draw this carbon straight off like that, as opposed to the zigzag we've been doing, is because I need to reflect this linear geometry. I have to reflect the fact that those bond, the bond angle from here to here is 180 degrees, right? And then once I've reflected that, then I can go back to zigzagging. Because these carbons, right, they have four bonding areas, just like methane. So these carbons, we haven't drawn. These are all technically dashed and wedged. Don't worry about why we're not doing that. That's one that we're going to save that topic for when we talk about stereochemistry. But because there's four areas around it, that's going to have a tetrahedral shape. And you remember, those bond angles we deal with for tetrahedral shapes are 109.5 degrees. Here, here, there's four bonds right here, right? And there's four bonds right here. And you guessed it at the very end, four bonds right there. So just wanted to bring up the fact that we'll be dealing with, you know, saying, oh, there's linear geometry there, or, oh, there's trigonal planar geometry, or, and then obviously we'll be talking a whole bunch about tetrahedral geometry. So a little trip down memory lane with some Vesper theory, as long as you can remember and I'm, I kid you not, just those three, uh, linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral, you're golden. Okay, gang, thanks for checking in, and I'll see you in the next video.